Hi, this is Bob Burns from the National Center for Health and Public Housing. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, kind of Envision Center PHAs and FQHC opportunities for collaboration to improve resident health. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, partnerships between health centers and public housing agencies in support of the uh, health outcomes of residents of public housing and focus very strongly on Envision Center partnerships and health center partnerships uh, across the nation. Um, just want to ask if Lisa Nowinski is on the phone. Yes, she uh, she says she is in the line. Okay, great, great. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and kick off, um, Lisa, and then maybe what we can do is when we get to the discussion phase, maybe you could introduce the other participants from Region Three. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm Bob Burns, Director of the National Center for Health and Public Housing. Uh, joining me today uh, is Dr. Saki Malik Cho, our Director of Policy, Research, and Health Promotion. And I'd like to thank Lisa Nowinski of HUD Region 3 for inviting us to speak with you today. Again, the topic is Envision Centers, PHAs, and FQHCs, Opportunities for Collaboration to Improve Resident Health. I just want to tell you a little bit about the National Center. Uh, National Center for Health and Public Housing, uh, or the National Center as we usually refer to it, strives to improve the health outcomes for those who live in or immediately accessible to public housing. We do that by delivering uh, training and technical assistance, research and outreach, and collaboration services. Uh, we work directly with health centers and housing agents to agencies to improve access to care, quality of care, and to ultimately improve the health outcomes of public housing residents across the nation. Today, uh, we'll be providing some background on the intersection of health centers and public housing agencies in the effort to improve the health and wellness of, of residents. Uh, but beyond that, we'll be focusing very much on uh, Envision Centers um, and how uh, uh, community health centers nationally can collaborate with Envision Center partners uh, in, in order to achieve the uh, health and wellness goal of the health and wellness pillar within Envision Centers. Uh, we'll talk about that at, at length in a minute. And at the end, we really look forward to the discussion portion. So as you're going along, um, if you have any questions, please, you know, please note them. Um, and then really kind of be thinking about how we can all work together to, uh, to really help deliver uh, successfully a health partnership between Envision Centers and, and, uh, and uh, health centers. Um, next, okay, just to give you a little background, there are 1,400 uh, federally qualified community health centers across the nation that provide health care to 28.4 million Americans. Uh, those 1,400 FQHCs have over 11,000 locations or 11,000 sites nationally. Um, of the 1,400 uh, health centers, about 385 of them are in or accessible to public housing and they provide care to 4.45 million patients. Um, within um, the, that 385, there are 107 public housing primary care grantees and they are funded by HHS to provide care to public housing uh, residents and they serve about 817,000 patients across the country. Um, and for your information, uh, health centers have about, oh, right now, almost 240,000 employees nationwide. So it's a very significant chunk of, of the healthcare sector. Next slide. Um, I wanna talk real quickly about some key characteristics of health centers. Um, They've been around for about 50 years, beginning in 65 with health centers in Boston, Mass, and Mount Bayou, Mississippi. And they now serve about one, one in 12 Americans, most of those below the poverty line uh, and paying with Medicaid. But we're talking about health centers that are you know, not, not for profits, public or private, provide a comprehensive scope of services. They're located in or serve a high need community medically underserved area or population governed with community involvement. The board is 51% users and patients, uh, treat parties regardless of ability to pay, and programs are focused on public housing residents, uh, health care, health centers near public housing in underserved areas, and long-standing, and, and one of the benefits is, uh, of all this is that health centers usually have long-standing relationships with the community, including public housing agencies. Next slide. 
Health centers are required to really be what's called a patient-centered medical home, and they provide comprehensive care, so full service, physical, mental, uh, dental health, um, and, and all the support services. A lot of them have um, you know, counseling, and uh, they have uh, you know, groups, they have um, optometrists, um, and they have just a full complement with nutritionists, social workers, uh, health educators, et cetera. Uh, they're patient-centered, which means they're relationship-based with the orientation to the whole per person. So not just the strictly the medical, but the overall well-being of the family. The care is coordinated across the broader healthcare system, including specialty care, hospitals, home health care, and community services and supports. Accessible services with shorter waiting times, um, enhanced in-person hours, 24-7. Of course, COVID has is, is brought to, to uh, the forefront the need for telehealth. Um, and, and by the way, uh, over 90% uh, of uh, community health centers now offer telehealth services. In fact, I think that number is now closer to 95%. And they're focused on quality and safety, committed to quality uh, and quality improvement through evidence-based medicine across the board. Next slide. Um, health centers and like housing agencies are found throughout the country. And just to demonstrate, usually, especially in urban areas, there's a, you know, usually a health center near your, your housing agency. Um, as you go out into more rural communities, you kind of have to expand uh, to a, a wider net in order to you know, find that health center. But we'd like to work with you to do all those things. Next slide. Just to talk a little about the social determinants of health, uh, including environment, the conditions of housing, safety, transportation, access to health and food, healthy food, along with education, employment, and income, income, all have uh, key roles in shaping health outcomes in terms of both longevity and quality of life. Um, and so as we get on into this a little bit, and we'll talk about it a little bit, uh, you'll note there's quite a parallel between the components of the uh, social determinants of health um, and the uh, Envision Center pillars. Next slide. Across the board, um, if you look at, at, at public housing residents in, in general, um, you find that have, they have much higher rates of chronic uh, disease. It's, uh, it's kind of staggering. Um, in some areas, up to two and three times the national average. Uh, but whether we're talking about asthma, uh, COPD, diabetes, or disabilities, um, obesity, um, you'll find that uh, public housing residents are afflicted much more heavily. And, and thus, the, the, uh, the reason originally for the creation of the public housing primary care program. Next slide. Okay. Partnerships between public housing authorities and public housing primary care health centers and health centers in general are ideal for addressing causes of health inequity, such as education, housing, neighborhood, environment, and employment opportunities. It's an opportunity to reduce and eliminate barriers, align agendas and goals, and integrate uh, the approach to delivery of services. Next slide, please. It's worth noting that uh, amongst HRSA's you know, top goals is to enhance population health and address health disparities through community partnerships. Key to those partnerships are partnerships uh, with housing agencies, uh, job development, workforce development, all stuff very relevant to Envision Centers. Next slide. I'm going to walk through very quickly a few examples of some collaborations and some of them with housing agencies and some with other folks in the community, but all just kind of representative of the kinds of things can happen when, when health centers and, and other partners work together. Next slide, please. Uh, in Chicago, Illinois, they were having issues uh, with resident engagement, uh, getting uh, residents enrolled in health insurance and other programs. And so working together with the Chicago Housing Authority, they found a grant and went out and, and hired uh, a couple of uh, community health workers uh, to act as eligibility uh, specialists and get folks registered. And were able to get 1,000 enrolled in health insurance and 3,000 uh, health education session at the TCA uh, Health Center, um, which was by the ultimate housing um, developments, uh, public housing development in Chicago. Next slide. 
Um, in Chicago, uh, Alivio Medical Center, working with the Resurrection Project in the city of Chicago, was able to work out a deal uh, where um, Alivio could get some some health center beds uh, dedicated to, to seniors, uh, or, or uh, a clinic dedicated to seniors and housing dedicated to seniors, um, and get some money in the process. Um, so the the outcome was was outstanding um, and kind of worked for all. But again, it was a kind of a unique partnership between a Health Center Alivio, the Resurrection Project, which was a, which does a lot of uh, low cost housing and community development work in Chicago in the city of Chicago uh, to great benefit for all. And as a result of doing that, it was a great experience because not only did they get uh, new housing developed and get a senior senior housing as part of that and get space for a, a community health center, but they were also to have a, an economic impact on the community, uh, wherein they did some training and, ex and internships for uh, kids in the community to see if they were interested in healthcare as a profession. So it was a win-win. Next slide. In Flint, Michigan, a little bit different, uh, Genesee Health System, which is a public housing primary care grantee uh, health center in Flint, uh, noticed that a lot of their, uh, of their patients were actually getting uh, entangled in, in drug court. And so what they did is they actually put a, uh, a staff member on site uh, in the court and actually reviewed records and identified those who had uh, issues um, or, or, or getting getting arrested and, and reached out and got those folks into training with a, an incredible result, 80% reduction in recidivism, a uh, $500,000 a year savings to the jail and a 50% reduction in psychiatric and subacute detox services. So just kind of a win-win. And these are, just, these are just some examples um, but what we really came together to talk about today is the next slide, which is Envision Centers. And Envision is something we, we, we kind of got involved with uh, almost from the beginning. Um, and it's and you know, watched it kind of grow uh, in kind of fits and starts over the last couple of years. And we're, of course, very much focused on the health and wellness pillar uh, and also on economic development. But I'm going to let uh, Dr. Cho talk about that in a minute. And I'm just going to go through a couple of other bits of information about uh, Envision Centers, at least where we are now in terms of Envision Centers and health partnerships. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, next slide. As you know, you know there are a number of Envision Centers nationally. This list really just incorporates the kind of original 17 uh, across the country. Uh, I guess the interesting thing about it for, for us uh, and for our partnerships with health centers is that in the case of Envision Centers, sometimes the lead agency is not the public housing agency. Uh, you know, sometimes it's the workforce agency or uh, you know, Catholic Charities, uh, Life Remodeled in Detroit. Um, next slide, please. And I, I guess I want to uh, go back to Michigan because I think it, it speaks to some of the complexities um, and the local nature of the work to form these health partnerships. Um, in Michigan, which was the, uh, the really the, the kickoff site for the entire country, um, they came up with three, three locations, two in Detroit and one in Inkster, which is uh, immediately adjacent to Detroit. And two of them are led by the uh, the housing commissions um, in Detroit and, and in Angster. And then a third, which is also within Detroit, uh, is led by a nonprofit Life for Models. Um, and all, all of them have gone through different stages in kind of forming, uh, I guess, getting their um, Envision Centers underway and also in forming uh, or finding and forming health partnerships. Um, you know, some Inkster was a little bit easier because they had had years ago a, a pretty good relationship between the Housing Commission and the local community health centers and, and, and were able to put that together. Uh, Detroit proper with the Detroit Housing Commission uh, has had been a little bit slower um, and partially because the opening of the center was a little bit slower, whereas Inkster was a little bit easier to get started. 
Um, they had a facility that was fairly easy to remodel and, and get running. Um, and in Detroit, uh, interesting enough, Detroit's actually Life Remodels facility is in an old school, uh, which the city donated to Life Remodel, Remodels. Um, and, uh, and that school had very low attendance and had really, um, they had kind of farmed the students off to a, a, another school where they combined the high school and the, and the middle school. Um, and both those schools have school-based clinics. So in the short term, they have a partnership between uh, the school-based clinics and Life Remodel, but they're looking for a more permanent solution and they're, and they're still looking for that more permanent solution because a, a school-based clinic has some limitations in that a school-based clinic is only, only open during school hours. Um, there's some, some limitations in terms of or any concerns about non-students being on school grounds. Um, and so they're still trying to find, find a better way. Um, going back, I guess some of the, the brighter you know, stories are perhaps um, if, you, if you could back the slide up to California uh, in San Diego, uh, the partnership with San Diego Housing Commission and the Workforce Partnership and La Maestra Health Center has, has been pretty strong. Um, and going forward in Spokane, Washington, um, they have a, a, a very nice partnership uh, with, uh, with a local health center there, one that uh, they've been working with for quite a long time, but, but very strong results. But the results have been, have differed greatly from community to community. And again, uh, every local area is different. So we wanna try to be flexible uh, in putting these together. And ultimately our focus is not really to be necessarily be involved. Our, our, our focus is really just to see that uh, Envision Centers have the uh, health partnership that they're looking for and try to make sure that they can partner with, uh, with um, federally qualified health centers if they want to. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Um, as part of that effort, I mean, you know, in, in a first step when you're kind of going through the process, you know, you kind of take a look at your community and see where uh, there are health centers in the area. Um, and this is just to give you a, kind of go back to the discussion on the Durfee uh, Community Innovation Center, which is, is run by Life Remodeled, and that's the green block on the map. And around it, you'll see, uh, you know, some different health centers that have, uh, that, are, that are in that vicinity, the Wellness Plan, Covenant Community Care, and St. John Community Health Investment Corporation. And so part of the effort there was first to map and identify those sites, and then to get them you know, into a room, so to speak, though actually it was initially a, a conference call to see if there was interest in partnering and how that could how that could possibly work. Um, and as it, what finally happened is, at least initially, Family Medical Center of Michigan um, at Central High School and another uh, um, clinic run by St. John Community Health Investment in that in, in at Central High School ended up being the partner uh, to the. Envision Center, at least in the short term. Next slide, please. And so as you can see, they kind of whittled it down to these two and that's that's where they, they ended up. Um, but they're still looking to find a more permanent solution. I think they'd like something on site or they'd like something um, with, where they could get people into more full-time uh, healthcare that is available to adults more than just during school hours and so on. Next slide. Um, as, as we're talking about uh, partnerships, you know, one challenge I want to mention, and this was originally done actually as part of a smoke-free uh, you know, implementation of uh, smoke-free public housing, but it's the table regarding uh, partnerships and collaboration that's really uh, our focus here. And when we did that, uh, we found that about 64% um, of the health centers had a, a, a letter of agreement or some kind of uh, understanding with the public housing agency. Um, now, the good news is, you know, 64% do, but the bad news is 36% don't. Um, and we'd like to try to work with you, not just on Envision, but in general, to ensure that th there are those public housing agency and health center partnerships across the board. Next slide, please. 
At this point, I'm going to talk, uh, turn it over to uh, Dr. Saki Malikcho um, to kind of cover the in depth and vision and partnerships, and then we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit on the other side. So, Saki. Hi. Thanks so much, Bob. Um, and uh, thank you so much for giving me the time to talk to you all today. We are very excited about working with you all on um, how to develop relationships between vision centers and health centers. Um, we are currently working on a guide um, designed for both envision centers and health centers to outline um, how they can potentially develop partnerships. That uh, document is forthcoming, but I do want to highlight some of the content and echo a lot of what Bob said, which is that health centers are, are natural partners for Envision Centers because there is so much synergy in their mission and their goals. And I would um, say that Envision Center initiative in many ways addresses the social determinants of health that um, Bob mentioned before because of its central focus on education and income, which are key to achieving good health outcomes. And because it so clearly calls out the importance of health and wellness. And um, when we look at the Envision Center pillars, I think there's two that really stand out to us on ways that health centers and Envision Centers can partner, and that's to focus on the economic empowerment goal and, of course, the health and wellness goal. Um, as Bob mentioned earlier, health centers really are an integral source of local employment and economic growth in many of the um, underserved and low-income communities. The TCA Health and the Chicago Housing Authority example that he mentioned showed how their partnership resulted in the hiring of two public housing residents. And we think there is an opportunity for more of that kind of training and hiring of staff, particularly community health workers. And I'm not really sure how many of you all on the call today are familiar with community health workers. They have a few names, um, sometimes referred to as promotora, sometimes CHWs, health advisors or health educators. But essentially, a community health worker is a frontline public health worker who is also a trusted member of the community or someone that has a very close understanding of the community that's served. And they perform a range of activities um, like outreach and community education, informal counseling, social support advocacy, all of those types of things. So one way to engage in a partnership that could build both on individual and community capacity, um, as well as improve health knowledge and self-sufficiency would be through a job creation or training initiative that focuses on community health workers. And then the other more obvious way to work together is to, for, to focus on the health and wellness goal. And those are the sample goals um, that HUD has outlined um, for Envision Centers. Two of them call out FQHCs at right, but there are, there are other goals that could benefit the health of the local public housing community in a meaningful way. Um, and a health center partner could help Envision Centers identify what those goals might be and help evaluate whether those goals are being met. Um, next slide, please. So as I mentioned before, this guide that we're developing has some key points to consider when identifying a health and wellness goal. And again, these are just the highlights. Um, the first step is to be aware of that national data that Bob described earlier that points out the health issues that are most prevalent among public housing residents, like diabetes, asthma, smoking. And so one option could be to base goals on those key health conditions. Um, but there may be some local health data in the community that shows but actually, you know, there are a few things that are really important for the community. Maybe uh, the opioid crisis has hit um, the, the public housing development's hard, or there's a lot of crime and violence. So, so an Envision Center might choose to focus on behavioral health goals. And there are local data sources um, that exist, and the guide shows Envision where they can go uh, to get that local information to help inform their decisions. Um, another approach could be to really consider the pressing social determinants of health in the communities, access to healthy food and issues, having a safe place to exercise a problem. And so the goals could extend to those areas as well. Um, but having a health partner at the table to provide some guidance on how to prioritize the areas of focus could be really helpful as well as understanding, you know, what is measurable and what is likely to have impact over the short and the long term when it comes to health outcomes. And it's also um, helpful to create uh, a formal relationship with those health centers, whether it's developing an MOU, 
that outlines the, the roles and the responsibilities for each of those organizations. Um, of course, engaging the public housing community is critical to know whether um, the goals that you've chosen are uh, addressing the actual community needs. Um, very often, research and data, data will tell us one thing, but the residents really are the best uh, litmus test for knowing whether or not we're actually moving in the right direction and it's important for trust and it's important for achieving goals. Uh, so we always have to remember to involve the community. And then finally, evaluation, which is often a last stop. But it's very important to understand the impact of the work and where and how to improve um, for the next round. Next slide, please. So here are just some of the summary of the things that we've identified as you know, uh, the important key points to forming a, a partnership between Envision Centers and Health Centers. The first is to identify a health center partner, um, to understand where the service areas are and where that population needs are um, uh, so that there's overlap. Um, so just for example, we know that there are currently 42 Envision Centers and there are about 102 health centers that are located in those same cities. Um, some of them closer, some of them a little bit farther away from the Envision Center. So they really have to see where the overlap is as far as the service area is concerned. Um, and uh, to look at the type of uh, services that health centers can provide, both short and long term. Um, Health centers have brick and mortar sites, but they also provide um, mobile services. So that's a, another uh, possibility and enabling services and case management. Again, uh, developing a formal relationship, whether it's an, a memorandum, mem memorandum of understanding um, that outlines the goals and the, of the relationship. Another type of um, formal document that uh, TCA Health, for example, used was a lease agreement. So they had a lease agreement with the um, housing authority to provide services on site. So that's another option uh, of, of way of going. Another is to um, have space on your board uh, to, for each of the member organizations so that there can be constant communication about what's going on um, agency-wide. Um, and also to evaluate uh, constantly so, and reevaluate. Uh, on, a, on a continuous way to um, improve um, your relationship and your goals and your outcomes. Next slide, please. So um, just two ways to find a health center partner. We have developed a directory of Envision Centers and Health Centers, and we'll update, update this as new Envisions come around, and um, we'll have this uh, directory available on our website. Um, but it uh, includes all of the uh, Envision Centers and then the health centers that are located in those cities and all of the contact information so that um, Envision and health centers can uh, have a, one place to go to um, find contact information for each other. The other options are the HRSA's Find a Health Center uh, website, and um, we have also created an interactive map that you can use to to look at um, your community area and see where the health centers are actually located. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So here is our interactive map, um, just to give you a, a, an idea of what this looks like. And you can see um, the health centers there are located in blue. Um, we have public housing uh, development sites also located on those maps. And we also have some maps that highlight some of the health conditions that are uh, most pressing in those areas. And you can see like diabetes, uh, low birth weight, poor or fair health. And we have a number of health indicators that are available on the, on, on, as different layers on this map um, to help you understand and prioritize what health needs are most important for your area. Next slide, please. And this is the Find a Health Center um, website and you can put in your zip code and again it'll show you uh, geographically where they're located um, in a particular area. Um, I think that's it. Next slide. I think it's back to you Bob. Thank you. Okay thanks Saki. Appreciate it. 
Um, and just some, some quick recommendations before we get into the Envision discussion. Um, you know, uh, through our qualitative research, we've identified several basic strategies to develop strong partnerships, uh, which really include understanding your partner and their expertise and what they're able to do, and outlay, outlining mutual value, creating a paper trail to document tasks and activities and, and all that good stuff. But really, um, you know, across the board, I mean, collaborate, communicate, educate, engage, and prioritize. Um, the reciprocal partnerships thing that Saki mentioned is really, really very valuable um, because what we've observed over time is that a lot of partnerships have broken down and basically because people have either moved on to other jobs or have retired. Um, and so if you have those seats on each other's boards, whether it's the Envision Center or a PHA or an FQHC, um, it really ensures that that all parties who need to be in the conversation are there. Um, you know, environmental scan and asset ma mapping is, a, is an excellent place to start, um, as well as physical mapping, like some of the resources that Saki just explained. Um, engage the community together. You know, if, if the PHA and the Vision and FQHC can get out there together and work together, you know, PHAs have, have their, their residents and the folks that they support. Uh, health centers have the same. Um, some of them overlap, some of them don't, but it's a way to build the whole community. Um, so you know, we suggest that. Um, annual meetings and, and lease signings, you know, at, um, you know, at public housing agencies is a great time to to refer um, uh, residents uh, to health center services or to invasion center services. Uh, so it's it's worked in the past. So it's a, it's a, something we hope you'll do. Um, and try to leverage whatever resources you have. Um, you know, whether or not it's a, you know a strong voice uh, in the neighborhood, or it's uh, the local uh, the local church. Um, you know, whatever you have, just, you know, try to take advantage of it. And case management, uh, again, uh, part of the challenge, I think, as we look at Envision Centers, um, is that, you know, you might have an individual who has, you know, multiple needs or can benefit from multiple services, whether or not it's health um, or job search or job training, um, or maybe they need some enabling services. Maybe they need, you know, somebody to, to babysit while they, you know, uh, go to an appointment or they need a ride to get to an appointment. Um, but anyway, I mean, guess what we're really interested and focused on is that partnership building and promotion of Envision Centers. Um, and we'd like to, to really jump into that. And next slide. Um, so, you know, just in general partnership opportunities and Vision Centers is, is really, you know, key uh, PHA and health center partnerships. Uh, ensuring the health of residents impacted by changes in public housing, because uh, you know, as as you folks on the front lines lines know, been a huge move from traditional public housing over the last you know 30 years, uh, you know, from the use of vouchers to to rad developments and and moving to work and so on, um, and cross sector collaboration across the board, you know, government part uh, government partners, national and local partners. You know, a key to this thing. Obviously, we're a we're a national organization with a national focus, um, but we try to work with uh, with local uh, entities and housing agencies and health centers uh, to help you know support this. Um, I should mention that we are we are funded uh, by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Um, to provide training in TA, um, but the opinions uh, expressed are our own uh, and not those necessarily of HHS and HRSA. Um, but we, we very much want to work with you guys. Next slide. Um, you can partner with NCHBH. Um, we have advisory groups, learning collaboratives, research, working sessions, information sharing, of which this is part. Next slide. Um, we provide HRSA, HHS updates, Medicare updates, uh, funding opportunities, resources and services, and just a host of webinars and learning collaboratives, et cetera. Next, um, our website, nchbh.org, um, and excuse the commercial, but we always wanna get the word out, information about our learning collaboratives and webinars and publications and provider, provider and resident-centered fact sheets, mapping, newsletters, annual symposiums, one-on-one, uh, 
um, you know, all of the above. Next slide. We're also on so social media, uh, nchbeach.org, Facebook, and uh, and of course our YouTube channel where you can get a lot of our past webinars and events. Um, and I'm going to just go to the last slide, which has all our contact information. Um, you know, at the end. And and now I guess I want to kind of just go back and kind of have a, a a bit of a discussion. And at this point, I think. If we can, I just I'm going to at least I'm just going to kind of explain uh, where I think we are, and then maybe if you could, if we could just do some introductions uh, of the folks who are on the phone, um, and, and have a little bit of discussion on how we move forward, which I, I think is is the next phase of this thing. Um, but at this point, we are um, you know excited about the fact that that you guys have already jumped from the original 16 or 17 sites to I guess up now to 42. Um, and we want to help you build, uh, I guess, build partnerships or improve partnerships uh, to make sure that you have the help partners that you need. Uh, and to do that, you know, we've talked to HUD Central, and it seems like what we're going to do is focus initially on Region 3 and Region 6, and then maybe use kind of the lessons learned uh, in that process uh, for the rest of the Envision developments that follow it. Um, and, and I'm talking fairly short term about just fo focusing on regions uh, three and six. And that's, I think, th hopefully we can do that um, you know, through the end of June um, and, and then have some lessons learned, which we can pass on uh, to, the, to the national, uh, I guess, HUD audience and, and all of the health, uh, housing agencies that are out there and all of the envision centers that are out there. Um, so at this point, if I can, Lisa, if you wouldn't mind uh, coming on and just kind of uh, telling us a little bit about who we've got on the on the phone, um, and then maybe we can engage a little bit on, on on some of the particulars of next steps. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Gotcha. Great. Um, so thank you again, Bob, to you and your team for giving that great overview of how Envision Centers and National Center for Health and Public Housing can collaborate to bring or strengthen health resources at the Envision Centers in Region 3. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if I'm able to see the participant list, um, but those that should be on are HUD staff that work in Region 3 um, throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. So Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, DC, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia. And all of these individuals work either directly with a current Envision Center site, they work with the PHAs in their area, or they're working um, to bring on new Envision Center sites. And, and this um, so would, would, would these folks actually work with the Envision Center sites in, in helping them develop their partnerships or, or do, do the Envision Centers report to them as to how they're doing? Or Yes, so these individuals, again, apologies, I can't see who's on, but um, anyone that is a site lead works directly with the Envision Centers that have been designated to assist them on any gaps that they um, have identified as a need and also just to bring new partnerships to the Envision Centers because that is the perk of being Envision Centers, you get that focus from HUD. Okay, yeah, that, that helps. So if we were to, so as, as a next step, um, you know, I, I think what we'd like to do is kind of get a note out to our health centers and, and, and maybe you to your uh, public housing agencies and do something similar to this, kind of talking about the programs and so on, um, and then see if we could go from there and kind of help facilitate um, some of the partnerships to the degree, degree that that's needed. I think some, some folks it will take off and some might need a little more help, um, but we'd be we happy to do that. And I guess, you know, you mentioned you know, the locations, Pittsburgh, uh, Philly, DC, Delaware, and Maryland. Um, 
you know, so I guess I guess the question would be for us, or will be for us at some point, you know, which of those actually are still looking for assistance, and which may have already, you know, formed a partnership that they're happy with. Mm -hmm. And I think the best, and I don't know if anyone has opted to unmute themselves, but I think the best way to do that is after this call, is for you to connect with with us as a region and the, the site leads can put, are the best ones that can put you in touch with the current sites that they work with since they do have that on the ground working relationship with the sites. Okay, and, and, and one thing that we had, dis, had discussed and maybe we could get some feedback from folks on the line. Um, I guess we're trying to find the, the simplest way and an acceptable way um, for people to uh, get together. And so one thing we had thought of is simply is kind of almost using kind of a uh, almost a social social media approach, um, which would be to set up something very simple um, on our through our website and allow people who are you know to go in um, and, and if they're if they're a, uh, an envision center looking for a partnership, just to make that known, and and then see if we could get the the health center folks to to respond in kind. Um, and I, I I just like to get some feedback from folks as to whether or not they think that would work, or if they'd be willing to do it. Um, sorry, Bob. Sorry to interrupt. So what I think we that could this could help right now is that I can unmute everybody. And okay. then um, maybe you guys could, um, you know, just say your names and uh, say where you're you're coming from, and then that that this could maybe help uh, the discussion a little bit. Okay, sure, go ahead. Okay. This is uh, Marvin Turner. I don't know if uh, I think I'm unmuted. I, uh, you are over, <laughs> Thank you. I work with the DC Housing, Housing Authority on their Envision Center. Uh, Belinda Falamola works with me. She may be on the line as well. Uh, okay, great. Thank I, you I very much. To, I wanted to speak up because this is something that they've identified as a um, as a donut hole in their approach. Um, you know, they want to work with health, uh, health is one of the pillars a little bit more. And so they have an interest. A couple of questions I did have. Um, you mentioned that you were putting together, or I think Dr. Sho mentioned that she was putting together or updating a, uh, uh, I'll, I'll call it, yeah. Yep. On uh, how to work together. And the second part, the second question in that, which goes sort of hand in hand with that, uh, you also mentioned in a potential MOU. I wanted to know if that booklet would include a draft of what that MOU would look look like. I'll go back on mute and see you on mute. Hi, this is Saki. Thanks so much for that question. So yes, we we have um, we have several resources that I think would be helpful in facilitating a relationship between uh, Envisions and health centers. Um, so the guide does outline uh, ways to engage in a, an MOU. We also have another document called Developing Cross Sector Partnerships, which is um, a step by step kind of guide that includes more in depth discussion of an MOU. And I wonder if it might be helpful for us to just, um, I don't know, tag in some way, uh, Bob, uh, the specific re resources that might be helpful for Envisions. And we can yeah. follow up via email or in our conversations that we have at a later time on yeah. um, uh, highlighting those particular ones. But yes, um, that detailed information will be in those documents. Yep, yeah, we definitely do that. Anybody else? Hi, this is Carrie Schmidt from Richmond, Virginia. Hi, and Carrie. 
Thank you, Bob and Saki, for the presentation. I believe we have three currently, um, three Envision Centers that have been on board since the beginning of the year, and we just brought on one other um, mm -hmm. that's very rural, and we did that on Friday. And some do have relationships with health centers, but I think having um, the discussion that you had mentioned earlier, I do believe the ones in Virginia would be um, very agreeable to that type of setting to really find out what the connection points could be to make either what they have better or to bring on um, a new partnership. Yeah, you know, Carrie, this this is a question that kind of we have as because we're trying to plot the way forward on this. And our, our next thought again was to have a, a larger webinar where we would have, you know, the the public housing agency folks, and, and of course you guys and the health centers, you know, on that webinar. But I guess you know, would would that be helpful as a first step? And then you know, I guess how local do we need to go? in order to facilitate this so it would be helpful to you um, because you know you know a, a region-wide basis a statewide basis a locality basis uh, a, a center by cent you know an envision center by envision center basis i think the broad base would give them great deal of background knowledge and even even to marvin's point just a minute ago on the um mou yeah. the real nuts and bolts because yep. we've got varying levels and this would be across the entire region capacity within the housing authority some may be very large and and have a lot of staff some may be small and very little staff if we could do a larger one and then we in virginia um my sidekick, Megan Payne, and I uh, do a bi-weekly call with our Envision Centers. Mm -hmm. Then we could get their feedback as to how far down we would need to do. If we needed to do one more local call with maybe it's two out of the three or maybe it's all four. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we could really, I think, build on that. And 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 I want to pick on you, Carrie. But um, how how soon do you think we might be able to to do the next round? I guess what what what's reasonable in terms of planning and scheduling and all that kind of stuff. So for us, if we if you guys could do the bigger, broader one, mm -hmm. so have got their feet wet, um, yep. we can pretty much do it within a week. Get them together because okay. we have a meeting bi-weekly so we could um if the goal was to know where we were by the end of june i think that's very doable because okay. we're working you know virtually anyway okay that's that that's that's now would it on on, if on the broader discussion or the broader session would it be problematic to have another region involved in that or is that is that too much Oh no, I think that would be fine. Okay, okay, that's that's very helpful. I mean, it's just me talking, but it would be okay with us. Yeah. Any any <laughs> other feedback on that? Anybody? Martin or any any anybody else? No, I agree, I agree with Carrie. Um, Carrie, if we had more than one region, that would not be a problem. Okay. What, what would happen is that I think you would have a broad, uh, broader um, uh, flux of questions that. Uh, Maybe one person doesn't answer ask, but another one does ask. Mm -hmm. and get, get good feedback. Thanks. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Hi, Bob. This is Maria Bynum from Delaware, and I have one Envision Center, a very yep. tiny one with not much staff, but I would um, support all that my colleagues have said as well. Um, you know, doing several regions together. Yep. Uh, the broader um, webinar, I think that would be great, and and certainly I'd be happy to reach out to my folks to um, follow up with with your webinar and to see where they are and what they'd like to do and and proceed from there. So I, I really appreciate the information you shared. It's a great opportunity for us. So thank you both for that. 
Well, well, thanks for the feedback. I really appreciate the input and, and the support because we would really love to, to pull something together for June. And it seems like it's possible, especially if we can combine the regions. And, you know, during this pandemic here in the state of Delaware, there's a big push for uh, testing for seniors and long term facilities and those kinds of things. So um, doing it at this point in time, connecting people with um, health resources, I, I think, you know, it's very appropriate. Yep, yep. And, and, and I'm wondering too, and I, I had mentioned the possibility of some kind of a portal uh, to maybe facilitate um, um, partnerships. And I'm just wondering, does that sound like something people would use or be willing to use, or is it just something that would kind of, you know, sit up on the web and, and, and nobody would want to, to go about doing it that way? This is Marvin again. Um, what typically works in DC, I can't speak for everyone else, is high tech, high touch, right? So you can put a portal out there, yep. but you still need to have that uh, interaction that. Yep. Dialogue. So high tech, high touch works very well. Okay. Hmm. So, so do you think, in addition to, um, you know, the something up on the website and 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 a larger, um, you know, webinar kind of thing, we need to do something with the with the individuals or the individual states or individual localities. My, my, my response to that would be the overall webinar with the portal. And then as Carrie was said, saying before, you know, drill down to that individual yeah. vision. That's the high tech, high touch. So yep. if you just do the webinar and the portal, that's nice. But, you know, I'm, this is DC, a fire happens every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so portal with the, uh, with the webinar and then say, you know, we, we want to do something, uh, you know, have a question and answer a dialogue with you. Yep. As well, and that, I think that works best for this area. Hey, hey Marvin, could, could you kind of maybe give us an example of where you, you've seen the, the high tech, high touch thing work successfully? Sure. So it wasn't in the vision center, but we did something with uh, what's called the uh, connect home. Connect Home was bringing access to uh, folks in the um, folks in the uh, younger folks in the in the public housing areas. High tech, we did the overall webinar, et cetera. The touch was we got um, buy-in from the executive director of the housing authority. Once that happened, initially the goal was let's sign up 500 kids. Once we got that buy-in with the high touch at the right um, at the right level, we signed up 1,800 kids and got a partnership with the city. Uh, so, yeah. And, and, and but that, that's that that's great. So that that's a great example. And and just a, just a, I'm just a, a question. If you've gotten any feedback from. Um, from your your housing agencies or the envision centers um have they been had much luck in reaching out to establish those partnerships health partnerships and particularly with uh with community health centers so that was something that hud was supposed to bring to the table in, in some respect um so uh we've been bringing partners to them but in most cases i'll speak for my envision center or the one that I work with. They've given me feedback. You're good on the education. You're good on the uh, character and leadership. They're great on the economics, but they wanted more focus on the health uh, portion. And okay. that's what makes this, uh, this particular seminar better, thanks. That's, that's, that's a good tip, all right. So. Okay. Um, and the other question I have, I guess, uh, for all you guys, including you, Lisa, is um, how do you guys work with uh, with Jill Yu and, and the and the people at HUD headquarters? Are they 
Is, is Jill working with you guys directly? Yes. Maybe not directly every day, but we're in communication with Jill. Okay. Okay. So, so is 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 she kind? Of, is she the program lead from from HUD HQ? Hi, hi, Bob. This is Lisa. Um, so Jill is the point of contact for Envision Centers in regions one through four. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then her colleague Ramel. Yep. We split up the regions. So yep. Jill Jill works with us, and then Ramel works with the others. Okay. Yeah, and I've, I've spoken to Ramel. Okay, that, that that helps me. Thank you. Okay. Um, and and the other question I had for you guys is, do you guys have any, as far as Envision Centers now, do you have any milestones, you know, right now relative to the program, um, that we should be aware of or can help you reach? I guess. Uh Bob, do you mean milestones in, in health and wellness or just in general what they are trying to achieve? Well, well, health, health and wellness would be would be great or also economic empowerment, as Saki mentioned, is something that we think is very relevant. I mean, one thing I, I guess I should mention um, is that you know, health centers uh, were created to be community-based organizations. And in fact, the second community health center, which was in Mount Bayou, Mississippi, um, there was a, uh, you know, one of the, one of the folks who, who used the center and had four kids who used the center, um, you know, uh, something happened to her husband. And so she, she needed a job. And so she got a job at the health center initially doing, uh, administrative work. Uh, she went from there and she became an LPN, uh, and then she became an RN, uh, and then she got her master's and then she got her PhD and she actually ran the health center, uh, from the, uh, the uh, mid 80s um, you know, through the uh, the 90s so so that's something we're geared to so all that is to say you know we're very interested in the economic empowerment side as well um, okay I didn't was there anyone on the line that wanted to share now or we can compile something as a region and send it to Bob yeah yes, I think that would probably be good. You can look through the uh, quarterly reports and for their initial application and see what the donut holes are. They were supposed to identify those for us uh, at the beginning, and each one has a little bit different. Um, so I, I, I would certainly suggest that, that at least the, uh, if that's what you're suggesting, that would okay. be a good, good measure. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Some kind of we can. Um put something together um, of what has been achieved, who they're working with currently, and you know what what have they identified as gaps, specifically mostly from what I've seen in action plans related to health and wellness. That would that that would be great. And you know, and, and anything that would be you know easier on the on on the people out in the field, you know, so if there's any existing reporting, that would be great too. Um, you know, not trying to make any work for anybody. Um, and then we've only got about, about, I think we've only got a couple of minutes left. So I just wanted to ask one quick question relative to health center public housing agency partnerships in general. And I guess, um, is, is there any, any advice that you folks or any, anything you'd like to tell us about how to make sure that happens? Because we see, see a great uh, variation, you know, around the country, um, you know, some really tight, you know, working hand in glove and some, you know, very little communication. Um, and though they're working, you know, on behalf of the same folks, they're not necessarily working together. And we'd really like to promote that. Um, so if you have, if anybody like to throw out any thoughts on that in the remaining minute or so, I'd appreciate it. I think you guys are bashful. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, if Carol Payne was, was, was with me, she would probably give you a great focus area on health and housing. Did you say Carol Payne? Yes, I did. Yeah, well, of course, and of course she would, because she is yeah. outstanding in that regard. Yeah. Exactly. I'm a finance guy, so I can't, I don't really <laughs> have to answer it, just suggesting that. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. 
Anybody else? Carrie? Maria? <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, I, I mean, I, and I won't, I won't keep you guys because I know everybody's busy, but, but we really want to push that because we think that, you know, in terms of Envision Centers and a whole host of other, you know, initiatives, um, we had a great experience working with, uh, with health centers and housing agencies um, um, on, on smoking, uh, smoke-free public housing and some other initiatives. And we've had a great history with it, but we'd like to make sure that continues and even improves. And we think the way to do that is really push on the partnership side. Um, so we'll, we'll get back to you on that with, with, with some other suggestions that we have and see what you guys think of them. And, and, and Lisa, at this point, I, it's, it's three o'clock and I want to keep you guys. I just want to thank you for taking the time. Um, and if you could get that information to us, Lisa, that would be great. And then on our end, I'll, I'll probably check, we'll check back in with you, Lisa, about some, some scheduling date options um, for that next session where we'll bring together uh, the folks uh, from some of the housing agencies and the, uh, and the regional uh, in, the, in the two regions. That sounds good. And you also have um, access to everyone's emails. They are on the original oh, great. Outlook invite that I, that I created. So, you know, we're, we're open ear, open eyes, I guess I should say, for any information that you might have or any questions you might have for the, the overview or the broader concept webinar. Okay, that 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 sounds excellent. We'll, we'll we'll take advantage of that, and like I said, we'll focus now on arranging something with you know with the two regions and the housing agencies and the um, and try to get the and get the health centers involved and see if we can uh, kind of get going on some of this partnership stuff. So so thanks very much, guys, and, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.